So I'm just going to go very briefly over these just because um, a lot of it is sort of revision, but then the new topics, which are um, geometric and sort of optical, which are the new things for um, year 12 isomers, are, can get quite confusing. And I don't expect you to understand it after today. I just want to sort of give a brief little understanding of what it is. So isomers in year 11 were this, and this was not a thing. Now in year 12, this is now a thing. So you do need to know about stereo and we will, they're the ones we're going to go through soon. Now structural, structural isomers are what you did in year 11. I'm not going to read through that. Um, oh, it doesn't even go over it. I must have gotten rid of it because I've literally thought like it's year 11 revision. I'm not going to spend too much time. Structural, just remember, structural is literally like, you know, you've got butane and then you go and like you have butane, looks like this. And then you essentially go, all right, actually, I'm going to make this. These have the same molecular formula. So C4H10, C4H10. They both have the same molecular formula, but they're just drawn differently. Stereoisomers differ in terms of there's no big structural change. You have just like subtle differences in how they are displayed in three-dimensional space. And there are two forms of that. There are optical and geometric. Optical are the ones that are really confusing. Geometric are pretty straightforward. And geometric, again, really big in food chem. So you go through geometric a heap more in food chem as well. So we'll start off with geometric. Geometric essentially means if you've got a double bond and you've got a functional group on either side of the double bond. Now, it has to be on either side. It cannot be like, you know, you can't draw this. These are two functional groups are on the same side. This is not going to have geometric isomers. They have to be on different sides. As you can see here, they're on different sides on both things, in both cases. Now, what's really important about this is it doesn't just have to be a functional group. It just cannot be a hydrogen. So it could look like this. So you could have like molecules like this. Then you have a hydrogen down here. And then you have a hydrogen up here, and you have a chlorine down here. Now, in this case here, I probably should have drawn this a little bit better. As you can see here, this is one functional group, this is another. I know this isn't necessarily a functional group, but we treat it like a functional group. It's different. You could have done the exact same thing down here. You could have said, you know, carbon with one, two, three, exactly the same thing. They are referred to as functional groups just because they're not hydrogens. Like if they're hydrogens, it doesn't work but they're not hydrogen, so it does. Now, what the difference between these two are is that this double bond here doesn't allow this to rotate around like this. So if I have a single bond, think of it like two fingers. I have, I have a finger, so I've got, that's a good way of doing this. I have this. Think about it, this double bond can sort of rotate and my these are carbons, my hands are carbons. See how my carbon can just rotate really easily? Now, if I'm like this, and I want to rotate my carbons, they cannot rotate because when I go to rotate them, the double bond gets in the way. The double bond doesn't allow me to rotate. There's no rotation. So that's what happens here. So this is what we're talking about. These are not the same molecule because this cannot rotate around. This is not possible. It's not possible for that to occur. If this was a single bond, it would be because it's not a single bond, it cannot. So these have different names. This here is trans, opposite sides. This here is cis, same. I remember it as cis, same. Cis means same, trans means opposite. Um, but the best way of remembering it is cis, same, cis, same, cis, same. It just reads, it just flows off the tongue. So I remember it as cis, same. These are on the same top or bottom. These are on the same. So these are both at the top. This one here, they're in different. One's at the top, one's at the bottom. So trans, different, cis, same. But cis, same is the best to do it is the best way to remember it. So they cannot rotate around the double bond, therefore in three-dimensional space, they are different. Optical isomers, these are really confusing. So we're just gonna go very briefly, just give one very brief example of it, and then that'll be it. So this can just get really, really confusing and I don't wanna spend too much time on it. Optical isomers are the same molecule with different, just different, different places for each of their functional groups. Now, what I mean by this is, this carbon is a chiral carbon, and this chiral carbon is called a chiral carbon because it has four distinct different things coming off it. It has a CH3, it has an OH, it has a H, 
and it has a C double OH. Now, if I drew a molecule like this, double bonded to a C, and yes, I put a chlorine there, and then I have one, two, one, two, three. You'd say to me, well, it's got, everything's different. This was a CH3, this is a CH2, and this is a chlorine. So I've got three different things coming off it. Isn't this chiral? Well, no, because there's two bonds here. So essentially what you think of it is this carbon, I'll draw it up here. This carbon is bonded to one, a CH3, two, a Cl, and then three and four are both bonded to a CH2. So therefore, these are the same, therefore this is not chiral. You need to have four different things. So you could have a carbon that's like this. That's a hydrogen, and then this is a chlorine. This is a chiral carbon, why? Because one, it's bonded to a CH3, two, it's bonded to a hydrogen, three, it's bonded to a chlorine, and four, it's bonded to a CH2, CH3, or a C2H5. So they are four different things. This is a chiral carbon. So in this case here, these are chiral carbons. And notice how these chiral carbons, I'm just getting rid of all this scribble, notice how these chiral carbons here are different. Because if I went to put these on top of each other, they would look different. The CH3 would be would be here, the H would be here. These are different. Now, please ignore the little triangle thing. They're just, they're just saying like one of them is up towards you and one is down into the page. Um, don't worry about that. Um, as you can see here, what we refer to that is, is the inability to superimpose. Now, the best example for this is your hands. Take one hand, put the other hand on top of it. I can't match my hands. It doesn't work. Oh, the only way I can do it is put it backwards, and that's not the same. If I try and put my hands down on top of each other, they're different. My thumb is here, and my thumb is here. They're non-superimposable. When something is superimposable, when you put them on top of each other, they are identical. These are mirror images, and therefore they are not superimposable. Therefore, they are different. Um, now, this is a really key concept. It's it's actually been very clinically and and like in real life been a proper topic. There was a a medication, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, I always forget it. It was through like the 60s, 70s, 80s, I believe. Uh, one of those eras, it was a morning sickness medication um, and they didn't realize that there was a chiral carbon in there. So if you had one version of that chiral carbon, it treated morning sickness. If you had the other version of chiral carbon, it did treat morning sickness, but it also caused damage to the unborn child. Um, and therefore, a lot of the children that were born on this medication ended up coming out with birth defects because those mothers were unlucky enough to buy this medication that cured morning sickness and take this medication, but they were taking the medication that just unluckily had the chiral version that was bad. Um, and the company that was producing it didn't realize at the time, and then they did come to that realization, obviously got sued, that drug isn't used anymore. Um, lost all the money, but essentially that's a real life implication of this, that there was two versions of it because of a chiral carbon, one of them was fine and the other one was not. Um, so it's important to understand that.